Hello everybody and welcome back to my rebranded channel where I give you high quality blockchain based content including honest reviews, technical updates, podcasts and more. And today with phase revelation. In today's honest review we're gonna have a look at Cardano. I promised you top 10 coins so here we go. We will talk about the team. We'll talk a great deal about Charles Hoskinson. We'll have a look at the Ouroboros white paper. That's a famous one. We'll naturally talk about token ADA and its prices. We'll also talk about adoption and utility. Of course there is going to be a section for my criticism. If that's what interests you then you should definitely stick around because this video is for you. Of course any kind of support will be greatly appreciated like liking, subscribing and commenting. It's going to all help me to push this and do this full time. Let's begin with a simple question. What is Cardano? Hi, I'm Charles Hoskinson and I'm here today to talk a little bit about Cardano. Cardano is a third generation multi-layered proof of stake cryptocurrency founded by Ethereum co-founder. Charles Hoskinson, Cardano follows research first philosophy. It wants to solve freaky issues through evidence based methods. These issues are scalability, interoperability, and sustainability. And now let's talk about all of these three in detail. The scalability ought to be solved using layer 2 solution Hydra that will speed up with usage. Secondly, the interoperability problem. That is meant to be solved through KMZ site chains. To understand it, we have to understand the two layers in Cardano, the settlement layer and computation layer. The settlement layer is CSL and computation layer is CCL. That is, uh, the value is transferred to the settlement layer and the computations are done on the CCL, obviously. KMZ sidechains allow the motion of funds in and out of the CSL. And not only to the CCL, but also other blockchains. They just need to have built the support for KMZ. That was interoperability and now finally sustainability is achieved through community governed treasury system which creates feedback loops that ought to self sustain the ecosystem even once Charles Hoskinson and IOHK are gone. Now each of these three key issues would deserve a separate video, there is a lot that we could talk about them but uh, for the purpose of this video I'm not gonna go down that road. I will just briefly mention that Cardano is not yet finished product but uh, some of these components are already live such as the treasury voting, the stakeholders can already vote on the improvement proposals and thus they can redistribute the treasury money into the projects that further evaluate the network. And now let's have a look at the team. There are three key entities that together make Cardano. It's Cardano Foundation, Emergo and IOHK. Cardano Foundation is a Swiss based foundation that is overlooking the Cardano development. Uh, Emergo is an entity that develops, supports and incubates commercial opportunities and integrates businesses into the blockchain system. It's supposed to be for profit arm of Cardano. IOHK is the technical company, engineering, ta engineering company that is uh, building Cardano. So for our purposes, we're going to check uh, the team of IOHK. HK. Now, in the website of IOHK, when you check the team site, you get literally hundreds perhaps of people, of the profiles of people. However, as you can very quickly notice, some of them don't even have a picture, some of them don't even have a mail, uh, and some of them only have the mail. You can only mail them on the IOHK mail address. So you can't even check their profile or their portfolio or just learn anything about them other than their name. You can try to Google them. It is my suspicion that uh, many of these people that we actually uh, see here are no longer actively working with IOHK. They only have their profile here. Perhaps they were connected in the past. Perhaps they just did one task for IOHK and they just got the profile here and the place here. Let me randomly pick 10 people, mail them on their uh, email address just introduce myself and ask them for a response to confirm that there are no ghosts. 
and let's see I'm gonna wait a couple of days and let's see how many out of these 10 how many responses will I get fast forward five days let's see how many responses have I gotten I contacted 10 people three responses Hello, hello. <laughs> Very much active and alive. <laughs> Working on top secret stuff. <laughs> Good looking and funny. <laughs> Save my life. <laughs> I have gotten three very friendly uh, responses. Although out of 10 people uh, in five days, actually it says six days ago, it's just 30%. So my suspicion can be true. And not all of the people listed on the IOHK website might be active, just have their profile there. But the silver lining is that those that are active are definitely good spirited people. Now, the founders of IOHK are very well known Charles Hoskinson and Jeremy Wood. Jeremy Wood is a figure that I've never heard about. There is very, very little uh, written about him. He was uh, executive assistant in Ethereum, however, for 10 months. And after that, he co-founded with the Charles Hoskinson. He co-founded Cardano. Ever since that time, there is nothing in his profile. And I don't get the, the impression that he's very active anyway. Also, his last videos uh, went out like five years ago and they are on IOHK. As for Charles, I'm gonna talk about Charles in a moment. But before I start, I also want to mention Tamara Hassan. Tamara Hassan is uh, a Canadian uh, who is often mentioned by Charles in his AMA. Canada loves their prodigal daughter, Tamara Hassan, my chief of staff. Who is now a president of IOHK as well. She was a chief of staff for a couple of years now. She started in IOHK as HR director and culture officer, but she was made a president this year, actually three months ago. Somebody that can add value into um, our ecosystem and, and, and help sort of, you know, just, just advise, bring their experience and level of expertise there. Obviously, community representation is very important. Now, I do not have any initiative criticism on Tamara. She seems to be a very bright individual driven by the fundamentals. Although, if Charles would leave Cardano before fully finished, I suppose Tamara would have to pick it up and I'm pretty sure she would be making different decisions in many ways. So the Cardano would likely have to start somewhere, some way, all over again. And now it's time to talk in depth about Charles himself. You may not respect me, or like me, but please do respect that we've put an enormous amount of work into this. Now, if you ask 10 people out of 10 from the blockchain space what they think about Charles Hoskinson, you are likely to get 10 completely different opinions. And they're likely to range anywhere from pathologic liar and scammer and wannabe dictator all the way to the visionary new kind of Stephen Jobs that is here to save with his visionary products the world, literally. And just the amount of careful thought, vision, and beauty that this has. Uh, and damn the people who want to tear that down. So as far as the Charles's history goes, in 2013, he quit his job that he was doing. He went 100% crypto, as far as he says. And he started doing educational program about Bitcoin. Shortly after, he with Dan Lermer built BitShares. However, it didn't take long because in late 2013, he co-founded Ethereum with eight guys. Today, very famous and very rich guys. Charles was CEO there. Although the, his venture in Ethereum didn't last very long. Uh, it lasted only a couple of months and he got kicked out of Ethereum uh, by Vitalik and Guy Wynwood uh, over the disagreement uh, whether uh, Ethereum should be profit or a non-profit. Charles wanted it to be for profit, so he got kicked out. But soon after, in late 2014, he started with Jeremy Wood IOHK and in 2015 they founded Cardano and he's been working on it ever since. People are bad sometimes. People are going to let you down sometimes. You're not always going to win the game. So then you should allow this to jade your thinking that everybody who tries shouldn't try Everybody who works hard shouldn't work hard because they have a chance of failing. I've mentioned the very bipolar and very diverse range of opinions there are on Charles. I think all of us can agree on one thing. Charles is one of the best speakers, storytellers and marketeers in the blockchain space today. 
you know, we haven't always done the perfect right thing. We released software out of order. We should have released Icarus before Daedalus. There's a million things that if I got a do-over, I'd do differently. But we never wavered about the way we wrote our software. We never wavered about our principles and what we were trying to do and who we were trying to do it for. We never wavered once. Take into consideration the fact that Cardano was ranked as number three largest cryptocurrency in the world by market cap back in September 2021. And at that point of time, Cardano did not even have smart contracts live. Wow. Good way how to check the community's exponential growth is to have a look at the Charles's YouTube channel statistics. I remember when I was watching Charles in 2019, he had about 10,000 subscribers. Today he has 313,000 subscribers. And just look how exponentially was the community growing in 2021. His channel alone was getting over 20,000 subscribers a month. Cardano is no longer Cardano is, it's Cardano R. Cardano is a nation. So if a community is growing this rampantly for an unfinished product, there must be some genius of marketing involved. People have named their kids Ada in Korea and Japan. People have gotten tattoos of our logos. To close this chapter, I can only express my opinion that while I do not agree with all the decisions Charles is making, I do believe in his intentions. That we all are part of a special movement that just wants the world for once to be a slightly better place. I originally intended to review original Cardano white paper written by Charles Hoskinson back in 2017, although I did not find that white paper here in IOHK library, uh, even though there is 141 papers, none of them is the original white paper. So I instead decided to go for the Ouroboros white paper. Ouroboros white paper was the second most cited academic paper back in 2020. So I wanted to see for myself what that baby is about. And surprise, surprise, the baby is very academic. There is tons of math involved. It would require me to study that for a very long time to be able at least partially understand it. But thankfully, there are some tools available, like this video done by Professor uh, Agelos Kiaias uh, about Ouroboros white paper. Uh, Agelos Kiaias is one of the authors of the paper. So I use these tools to uh, get the understanding of the paper and there are some notes that I have taken for you here. So uh, what it is about, Ouroboros is a proof of stake protocol that Cardano uses, okay? And it's not only that Cardano uses it, now other projects, I know that Con Concordium project uses it. It claims to provide security against fully adaptive corruption, uh, which is that uh, the adversary can corrupt any participant of dynamically evolving population of stakeholders. Uh, the main goal is to establish the same security as Bitcoin. Okay, so that's a huge, um, that's a very ambitious, uh, and they want to do that through the mathematical proofs. There are lots of proof of stake protocols, lots of proof of stake cryptocurrencies today, but the other protocols generally did not do this. Uh, another goals including include that people may join or leave the network at any a point of time so the stake is not locked up and also very good uh, call is that uh, the users do not have any uh, special mining requirements so the protocol in a very 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 brief nutshell it's organized into epochs those are organized into slots there are two random entities there are slot leaders and endorsers. They are picked randomly and they are forced to work together, which I think is a pretty good system. Because the inputs included in the blocks by the uh, slot leader are only accepted if they are endorsed by an eligible endorser. Uh, also, there is the delegation system where the stakeholders can delegate their vote rights to the stake pools. Papers focuses on many different kind of attacks that are possible, including grinding, covert, forkable strings, double spending, transaction denial, and many, many more. 
Although uh, Vitalik said um, related to this, uh, the real attack when it comes, it's gonna come outside the model, uh, which is something that I also agree that is likely. What I like about Cardano is that there are thousands of the stake pools at the moment. This is running from all around the globe, so geographically very nicely spread out and that's what in my opinion makes Cardano one of the most decentralized cryptocurrencies in the world. The large number of pools is thanks to the K parameter that is used to, to calculate the saturation point. So what K parameter actually does is it reduces the staking rewards when there is too much ADA staked in one pool. The total amount of ADA staked today is somewhere above 71%, which is also pretty impressive. Since we're talking about ADA tokens so much, now let's dive into the prices of ADA. Well, price action of ADA throughout its existence was nothing but boring. Let's start with the fundamentals, let's start with the basics. Currently, at the time of shooting, it's ranked number 7. It, the price of ADA is 56.5 cents. Total supply is fixed, 45 billion. So the supply can only go down and that's why the supply is deflationary which is, as we all know, is great for assets. Just shortly after Cardano, uh, after ADA uh, went to market, uh, it was during the very the wildest ICO days, if you remember that. I don't remember that because I wasn't there in crypto. I actually came at the very peak of that. So uh, the, the ADA went up like 56x or even more over 60x in 2017. Then it plummeted by 98%, more than 98%. And then, as I've already mentioned prior to this, due to the exponential community growth, there was also exponential ADA price growth. And ADA actually grew, I think, 100x from the Corona bottom to the peak, which is actually pretty um, wild given how um, liquid this project and this token is. But there is but. Um, I Again, I'm gonna talk about this more in my criticism part, but um, remember at the peak right here, the ADA uh, Cardano did not even have smart contracts live. At the moment, the price is 55 cents and uh, just uh, like three weeks or four weeks ago, if you look here closely, we had a perfect touch of this peak here, which is which was the early 2021. And it also touched the peak in 2018, which was a small bounce. I remember this time because I was around in crypto already in April 2018 and I remember watching the news that Cardano got listed on Binance. These touches and touches like that, they usually imply a bottom for some decent period of time. How long that is going to be, there is no way for me of knowing that. And is of course, it, it uh, depends on the macro factor as well, of course, on what these stocks are going to do at the moment because the crypto has always been very correlated to stocks. But unfortunately, there is even lower level where Cardano left and never came back. And these levels are around 18 or, or likely 15 cents. So 15 cents and uh, that's the level also, or around 15 cents, that's also the peak of the DeFi summer peak. And it also corresponds with this very small bounce and it also corresponds with the bottom of the March 2018. So the level here is very, very strong and significant in my opinion. And because we left that level and never came back and cryptocurrencies, this is this week is only on Kraken. So forget this week. Cryptocurrencies very often actually come back to these levels that they left untested. So this is a very strong level, 15 cents is a very strong level that is yet untested and, and in my opinion Cardano will visit that level uh, sooner or later in the future. Because of the huge hype 
that we had last year. Everybody that I know is kind of trapped here. And in my opinion, this level also because of the hype here, I would say it is likely that the price action is going to in the future visit this area as well. But uh, getting through the area to the new all-time high, in my opinion, will be very difficult. That was my brief analysis of token ADA. Now let's have a look at the adoption and utility of it so we can determine better how likely or how quickly can the $2 area come true. Let's begin with having a look at some key metrics. This is active addresses and from this chart you can see that even though the price of the token is roughly 50% lower than the summer lows of 2021, the active addresses is actually still higher than the, the, summer, than the lows of summer 2021, which is a good achievement. And that also demonstrates how much overvalued Cardano's token ADA was in 2021. So this is transaction volume and as you can see in 2022 it's actually kind of booming. Yet again, it just shows that at the moment Cardano is actually more valued than in 2021. It's just the price does not reflect that because the hype is not there today. Now there is lots of hope for Jet, algorithmic stablecoin deployed on Cardano, which is going to be live perhaps this year. It's already on testnet. Now Jet should be uh, very well collateralized because not only uh, there's going to be collateral from people that are going to mint the Jet, but also there are going to be some kind of lenders that can deposit ADA and get a reserve coin. And that reserve coin, which uh, we can see on the picture right here, the reserve coin is going to give you proportional uh, rewards uh, when the collateral moves up on price. So when ADA goes up on price. Uh, and also there should be some kind of uh, 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 improved black swan mechanics in JET. The protocol is going to stop minting JET when there is abnormal amount of collateral, like too much or too little. Unfortunately, however, it's being issued by uh, Coty and I am not completely positive on Coty because of the KYC rules and extreme centralization, in my opinion. Let's now dive into the two public no government deals. The first was announced as soon as 2019, and it was with the Republic of Georgia, a beautiful republic uh, just east, east outside of Europe. In 2019, the uh, Mikhail Batisvili, Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sport, said Leveraging IOHK, world's leading expertise, particularly in third generation blockchain technology, will help us to progress even further towards our goal of being the world's leading country for secure, digitally enabled international business. Then in 2020, there was, there was official confirmation that the two, along with the Free University and the Business of Technology University of Tbilisi, have been working together to build a credential verification system. However, ever since 2020, I haven't heard any new about where this deal is going and whether it's going to actually be executed or not. The second deal with Ethiopia was all around the news all throughout 2021. It all began in the spring when the government officials of, of Ethiopia actually traveled to uh, meet uh, IOHK to the US and Getun Mekuria said initiative is about being, uh, bringing technology to improve the quality of education in Ethiopia. Cardano is one of the top cryptocurrencies, which is why doing blockchain with IOHK is like a dream come true, quote on quote. So that means that blockchain with doing blockchain with IOHK is like uh, a dream coming true for me. Just before the smart contract launched in August 2021, it was confirmed that the uh, uh, blockchain based student ID system is actually going to take place in Ethiopia. That's going to be across 3,500 schools. Uh, it will involve 750,000 uh, teachers and it will facilitate roughly 5 million students. So at least 5 million users for Cardano. And finally, it has been confirmed in April 2022 that IOHK is launching the Ethiopia student blockchain project in the next two months. It does look like a well struck bargain to me. We have to do better. We have to leave behind something to those who come after us, which was better than what we found. 
as Augustus Caesar said, he found his city in granite, left it marble. That was about adoption, and now let's dive into many points of my criticism. Again and again, I've always said that it's not going to be first to market. It's going to be best to market. It's going to take at least a year before Cardano is fully finished. We can say that it will come out roughly around the same time than the fifth generation cryptocurrencies such as Radix. I simply ask, how does Cardano want to be better to market than Radix? Radix is going to have superior not only speed, throughput, but also buildability and arguably safety. How does Cardano want to be better? Hence my first point of criticism, I think Cardano has missed the ship to be best to market. Perhaps if their original roadmap timing would have come true, that was the open window for Cardano to be best to market. Although that's now long gone and there are still two eras to get done. Yes, it is true that Cardano seems to be very decentralized. Also, it is true that Cardano is very active on GitHub. They have had the most monthly commits on average in 2019 and 2020. Perhaps Cardano wants to win thanks to its peer-reviewed research-first approach. Perhaps it hopes that all of the other or most of the other competing uh, layer 1 networks are gonna be catastrophically attacked or destroyed and Cardano will be one of those left standing. But even in that case, which I don't think is very likely to happen, I think that such an attack will come from outside the model. Um, the reason why I think Deep Rigor is overrated is because I think like the the in terms of like why protocols fail, I think the number of failures th or that are outside the model is even more important, is like bigger and more important than the failures that are inside the model. Besides, there have been lots of issues with a smart contract launch on Cardano in September last year. For instance, MinSwap, while they were on testnet, they reported concurrency issues. Sunday Swap, another exchange, another DEX on Cardano, even in 2022, they are still reporting congestion. If your order is on chain, it will be processed. Orders are failing due to congestion. Please be patient. So these issues, they beg the question, how much does actually all the peer review research, which actually prolongs the development by that many years, how much of that research actually helps the network to be the best to market. The second point of my criticism is the Haskell choice. I don't necessarily think it was the best choice. Even Charles Hoskinson at least once admitted that. In an interview in 2020, he said, we should have probably used a different language to implement it. Haskell just was not ready. There is an argument that the libraries of Haskell might not be hardened enough for global ecosystem which Cardano wants to be. Also, the forums on Reddit are filled with people who had trouble even writing hello world, simple hello world application on Cardano. I've already talked to you a lot of times about why I think Cardano was seriously overpriced the last year. Another supportive argument would be just the forums. If you remember, in September, October, November, Cardano community was very uh, loud. Uh, for instance, in this article from the end of November, when price of ADA fell to roughly one dollar and a half, there was overwhelming complacency. I am buying your pain now, thanks for discounts. Just buy the dip and watch it in 2022. Accumulate. Wig hands, jumping ship, and so forth. All of these people who were buying the dip, they are today in 50 to 60% losses. All of that together, I think it's mainly due to the Charles' genius, his ability to, to talk, that they get the attention of the masses. Unlike the VCs of Silicon Valley and elsewhere that are chasing manipulation, bad tokenomics, insider distributions, this is the people's money. It doesn't need these things. So the things that come from it are fair. It is very hard to estimate what is the chance that Charles will leave the project before it's fully released. But I think there is a timeline where he actually does. I don't think it's over 50% chance, but even if it is 20% chance, I think that Cardano is too Charles dependent still. And if he leaves before the Cardano is fully finished, I think Tamara is gonna pick up, pick it up and finish it up. There is a realistic chance in that case that the price of the token would actually never see even a new all-time high in that case would never get through this red barrier where lots of people are trapped. Mm -hmm. 
I believe that Cardano was seriously overvalued in 2021 and it is uncertain whether it's going to have another overvaluation run in the future. Although in, even in the worst case scenario, I believe Cardano is here to stay competing with major layer ones. And moreover, I believe Cardano has a role to play in the upcoming war to come. I'm talking about the war versus the centralized entities because the dragon is not gonna go down without a fight. Much like the Dark Ages, when religions ruled the world that were regressive, and it was so offensive to believe that the earth revolved around the sun instead of the other way around, and those who had the audacity to even suggest it were burned at the stake. If we don't do something soon, we will enter into a modern equivalent of this.